be saucy with me, Bernays. Hello, I am Wesley Foreman, and this is Cooking for the Yum of It. Today, I am going to be attempting again to make my Bernays sauce. Technically not my Bernays sauce, because I got this recipe from the Julia Child, The French Chef Cookbook. These are all recipes she did actually on her TV show. Although, I'm sure some of them also appear in both volumes of Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Now, Bernays sauce, what I found interesting is, although it is not one of the five mother sauces, I remember the correct number this time, it is closely related to Hollandaise. So, I suppose in a way, you could say it is a daughter sauce to one of the five mother sauces. So, let's get started. Now, we're going to chop an onion, or in this case a shallot. Something you're really going to want to invest in is a nice pair of swim goggles. I got these at the Target store. Uh, not too far from where I live. But this way, the whatever it is that causes you to sneeze is doesn't affect you since your eyes are covered. First, we've got to finely dice, <coughs> mince actually our onions. You may remember seeing me do this with my hollandaise. Now we only needed one shallot because we only really need one tablespoon. have it. One finely minced shallot. And as I said, we only really need one tablespoon, which goes into our larger of my two saucepans. Now we're going to get one quarter cup of white wine vinegar. And we're going to add to that a quarter cup of a dry white wine, the driest you can get. This is uh, Madeira. It's medium dry. I wasn't able to get anything drier than this. But uh, you know, you make do with the ingredients that you have. Now we pour our wine and white wine vinegar into the saucepan with our minced shallots, and then we put into that. This is a combination of one half teaspoon of tarragon, one quarter teaspoon of salt, and one eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. We stir that in. And we bring that over here to our stove. Let me get some more light. And this uh, is, we need to make a reduction of this. So we're going to boil this until it reaches about two tablespoons. Now this is the mistake I made uh, last time when I tried to make this. I boiled it, for, I took my eyes off it for just a minute and it boiled away to too much where it was like barely one tablespoon and I needed two. So I decided to make hollandaise yesterday instead of the uh, bernays that I'm making this time. So like I said, we're going to boil this until it reduces down to two tablespoons and then we'll proceed. Alright, it's starting to boil and uh, like I said, you don't want to take your eyes off of this because it can boil away so quickly, quicker than you actually would real, you'd, you'd think. So I'm just going to keep standing here until it gets down to the level I need. Okay, it's starting to get down. We still have quite a ways to go though. As you can see that doesn't look anywhere near two tablespoons. I just wanted to say it's um, the aroma, the scent of this is really quite interesting. You can smell the vinegar and the wine, of course, and a little of the shallot. But what really is I find interesting is the aroma of the tarragon, which is in here, 
it, it's sort of a, a, a light, sweet, almost licorice-like smell, which is actually quite good. I don't care for the candy licorice myself, but the aroma is, is quite interesting, quite pleasant actually. And I'm going to see if I can find if there's an essential oil of tarragon that I can use in the diffuser my uh, roommates have that we use to uh, disperse the fragrances that arise from my cooking. Not that they're bad, but you know, after a while you really don't want to smell uh, beef bourguignon or uh, cocovan or uh, Sol Marnier week after week. You want you want that broken up so that uh, you can look forward to something new, I suppose. So have a way to go. Like I said, this once it starts at this level, it boils away so quickly. So let me get ready for when it's ready to go on to the next step. What we're going to do is strain out all of the solid bits that remain. That's a very important step. Okay, we're still get, we're getting close. You can see that it has gone down quite a ways. Well, I can. I don't know if at this angle you can really tell. I like to keep stirring this. I don't want it to settle too much. Okay. If I'm successful, this will be the first successful reduction <coughs> I've made. In, excuse me. I've made in my cooking since I've started following Julia's cookbooks. Well, I'll tell you, the only cookbook I have right now is The French Chef. So instead of making the uh, Bernays sauce next week like I originally planned, I found a uh, completely vegan recipe I want to try in honor of my uh, friend Elizabeth. If you're out there, Elizabeth, I hope you're doing well. Okay, it's getting close. At this point, I don't want to turn off the camera to jump ahead. It's oh, so close, so close. Now, I haven't found it myself, but I have heard that there is uh, tarragon-infused white wine vinegar that you can use. I don't know if that would be a good substitute, but I've heard it's available. Getting close. It's reducing quite well, and this is going to be quite interesting, I think. Now, after this is done, we have to let it cool before we can use it, otherwise it's uh, It'll cause the egg yolks to start cooking. Okay, I think that's that's about it. And if I've got a little bit more, who cares? Now, for the sake of convenience, I pour that part in there to make this easier. And I pour this part through my strainer. we can push out some extra of the liquid that's in there. And now we see if I've got the two tablespoons I need. There's one. And woohoo! What do you know? I did it! Two tablespoons Maybe a couple of drops more, who cares, of my white wine, white wine vinegar, 
shallot, salt, pepper, and tarragon reduction. I did it. Now, we're going to separate three eggs. If the egg whites are being difficult, take a little fork and just pull them out like that. And we save. We're going to save the egg yolks. I mean the egg whites, excuse me. As I did when I made my hollandaise. But the same as, as with uh, as with the uh, <coughs> Bernay, uh, hollandaise, the key ingredient are our three glorious egg yolks. The whites we save for future to make a nice keep practicing our egg white omelet or our uh, scrambled egg whites, but I think I'm going to just keep practicing that. The uh, liquid's still a little warm, so we're not going to use it quite yet. But we can do this part now. This is the... Uh, remember this from yesterday. This is the blender I used when I made my hollandaise. Just put that in there. Put on our lid. That does kick quite a bit. Make sure it's sealed, and we're going to spin this for 30 seconds. One, two, three, go. have it 30 seconds worth of blending the hell out of that egg yolk now as we did with our hollandaise you're going to heat an entire stick of butter to bubbling hot we don't want it to boil we want to melt it so I'm going to set this on two you just want it to get it nice and bubbling hot, not boiling hot. Maybe even one and a half. You don't want it to go too high. Now this part we can jump ahead for. Now while we're waiting for our butter to melt, we can add our <coughs> white wine and vinegar reduction and blend this a little more. Let's do that for another 30 seconds. Now we just wait for our butter. Uh, I think most of the butter consumption in Sacramento right now is due to me. <laughs> the aroma of just melting butter is just, oh, it's just enticing. It is intoxicating. Nothing broke. I just wanted to move one thing from one place to another. Now let's just jump ahead to when our butter is completely melted. Okay, it's a little too bubbly, so I'm turning the heat down. And I'm going to stir this some more. But we want it to be bubbly hot, but we don't want it to boil away. That would not be good. I'll get better with uh, estimating 
how much of the uh, when I reach the two tablespoon reduction but you know this first time like I said I was a little bit nervous hopefully I'm gonna have to do some research as well and see if this will uh, if I can store this and use it for a later date I may want to see if I can make either uh, Hollandaise or Bernays to take with me to the upcoming SGMC, that's Sacramento Gay Men's Chorus, Crabaret. It's uh, one of the highlights of the uh, of my calendar anyway. In fact, I need to make sure I get my tickets soon. I don't want to be shut out on that. Okay. Butter looks to be completely melted. So now we move on to the next step. Which you see it's still a little bit hotter than I'd like. But we have to do well, oh, sorry about that. I don't want to burn my countertop, although it's marble or granite or whatever, I don't know. Now, I'm sorry for the angles this is going to be in, but once I start pouring, I'm going to pour from this end because the little, I don't know if you can see it, the little spout right there on the uh, pan is on that side. So. Okay, I think it's about ready. So the same as we did with our hollandaise. Pouring a little butter. And we mix. And we keep doing that until all the butter is in. That's why I'm a friend of mine Fritz Lease, who lives in Arizona, uh, does a lot of uh, has an eBay store. Is uh, helping me out by uh, he's going to be selling me a nineteen selling me a uh, retro nineteen seventies blender, except uh, with the ice make uh, ice crusher that came with it. Except for the ice crusher, it looks exactly like one. My grandma Gentry had. Now, looking good not curdled at all like it was the first time I tried making this the flavor was okay that time but like I said it uh, it looked more like liquefied scrambled eggs than anything else safely put in the last of the butter. Now we're going to mash this for another 30 seconds.
Okay. Now let's take a look. Oh, see that? It just looks just as smooth. Oh, that is good. That is so good. Now, let's move on. Okay, uh, now the, asper the uh, Brussels sprouts are done. I'm going to toss them. This is uh, nothing in Julia's book. This is just something I thought would work. And so far it seems to be working well. I'm going to toss my Bernays, uh, the uh, Brussels sprouts with my Bernays sauce, which, mmm, that smells so good. It bears a passing resemblance to the uh, Hollandaise I made. It's a slightly different color. The only real difference, like I said, is instead of using the lemon juice, we use the white wine vinegar and the dry white wine, which in this case was the Madeira, which was a medium dry white wine. I couldn't find anything drier. But, oh. It's a nice, it's a subtle flavor, but it's sort of like, almost like a licorice-y kind of deal, but not completely. It's just really kind of tasty. Mm. This part... Mm. Anyway, let me set this for now. Leave that there. And we're going to have this with... Uh, there it is. I put it back in the cabinet. Silly me. And I'm going to serve this with some nice meatballs. I like meatballs. Lovely, lovely meaty balls. I don't know if you can. Oh yeah, you can. If my roommates were here, I'd share more of this with them, but I'll put this in the refrigerator and have it maybe for for lunch maybe tomorrow or the day after but there you have it brussels sprouts with a nice uh, sauce bernays now let's go eat this is going to be so good oh, cheers mm. Mm. Oh, that is good. And it does make me wish I had either some asparagus, although I'm not a big fan of asparagus, so I will eat it. Or even better, uh, artichokes. And some other interesting uh, <coughs> foods that this would go to. According to Julia's uh, book, it also goes well with uh, fish, egg, and uh, steak. So next time I make this, it will probably be for fish, egg, or steak. So anyway, that's my episode for today, where I've made my sauce bernays. I hope you get a chance to make this for yourself. Remember to uh, like if you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe. And feel free to comment below. Until next time, I am Wesley Foreman. Eat and enjoy.